welcome to the series of Advanced Automation Video Trainings. Today we'll learn more about Advanced Automation Billing Capabilities and how you can use them to automate your regular operations. Typically, most of MSPs have to deal with the following types of billing. 1. Recurring Billing 2. One-time Billing 3. Ticket Time Billing We'll see how you can use Advanced Automation to handle those. Let's start with the first type, Recurring Billing. To charge clients on regular basis use contracts in advanced automation. Contract is your agreement with a client, it defines. A contract period, or dates when you provide services to the client. List of services you provide. Agreed price and quantity of those services. So, you can set up a contract, submit a list of services you provide, but how to sync quantities of those services and how to automate this process. The following billing models are typically used by MSPs. Let's discuss them before we continue the demo. Usage-based billing. It allows you to bill clients based on service usage that changes dynamically. With advanced automation you can use usage-based billing for Acron IS and Microsoft CSP Tier 1 services. Per device billing. With this type you can bill based on number of registered client devices. Advanced automation provides you an overview of all devices under your management covered with Acron IS Cyber Protect, Advanced Management or Supported Third-Party RMM Systems. For user billing, it allows you to automatically bill based on number of active users under your management. Once you submit your client base to advanced automation, you can use this data to sync service quantities as well. Fixed price billing. This type allows you to automatically charge your clients for fixed amounts and fixed quantities. In advanced automation you can set up such contracts and charge your clients on monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annual basis. Manual. Finally, you can always submit arbitrary amounts to your contract part quantities in other cases for extra flexibility. Now, let's see how you can set up those billing models with advanced automation. Let's continue our contract creation. 1. I'm registering a new contract for one of my clients, let's call it Sophia Business School, Managed Services. I'm going to charge my client on a monthly basis, starting from the 1st of July. Now let's proceed to the contract part screen to add products and services to our contract. We'll start with usage-based billing model. This model can be used for most of Acrona's products, allows MSPs to set up a contract once, and when it's time to bill advanced automation will automatically sync service usages into configured contract parts. First product is Acrona's Cyber Protect Cloud for VM. To automatically sync usage, select integration Acrona's Cyber Cloud usage. Open the license type list and select the respective offering item. Current usage is displayed in brackets and will be automatically synchronized with the contract part. In this overview we'll cover examples for all mentioned billing models to demonstrate different use cases. The next example is also for usage-based billing, but for a third-party product, Microsoft Exchange Online. Using available integration Microsoft CSP Tier 1, will automatically collect usage values from the Microsoft portal. To do this, just select the client name in the VAR group field and the respective license type. Our next step is a per device billing model. With this examples you'll learn how to synchronize usage values with a number of devices under management. Let's add another contract part, this time for the advanced management service. To get the number of devices managed with Acron as platform, select the integration Acron as cyber cloud devices. In the group slash site field select one of the available device groups, and optionally filter your workloads using the device type field. In my case it's only one workstation with Acron as agent. I'm selecting it, clicking the automatic update checkbox, so advanced automation starts synchronizing the actual number of devices in the selected group with the contract part. If you're using one of the supported third-party RMM integrations, you can also synchronize the number of devices under management with advanced automation. Let's see how you can charge clients for workstation management. In the list of integrations find the third-party RMM name. Enable N Central in my case, select your customer site name in the group slash site field, and optionally filter devices by type. In my case we have two Windows workstations reported by the RMM and once this number changes, it will be reflected in the contract and in the client invoice automatically. For peruser billing model let's add another contract product. Acron is Cyber Files Cloud. User. With the licensing proceed. To take its usage from the number of active users under management, select the integration Acron as Cyber Cloud, Users. Optionally you may filter your users by type, users or registered contacts only.
In my case we'll count them both and with the automatic update option enabled, Advanced Automation reports two active users for this client. Finally, for the fixed price billing model, as well as for a manual usage reporting, you can use contract parts with manually set quantities. To cover this example let's add another service to our contract, Server Management. Let's put quantity 1 manually. In this case we should not use integrations, just leave this field empty. When it's time to bill, Advanced Automation will use this quantity 1 set manually and, of course, you can modify it when needed. With this we can save our contract and it's fully ready for the recurring billing. To register one-time sales and charge your clients use sales items in advanced automation. Sales items can be registered automatically or manually and reflect a client that will be charged. One or multiple included products or services that you deliver. Agreed price and quantity of those services. In advanced automation you'll work with one-time charges or sales items typically coming from the following sources. Accepted quotes. If your client accepts a quote, then contract products, such as subscriptions will be automatically converted to contracts items, but other products, such as perpetual licenses or hardware sales will be converted to sales items. Monthly service usage. All Acron as services measured in bytes and seconds, will be automatically registered as sales items on the first day of each month, once this information is available in Acron as cyber platform for a completed month. Example of such services are Acron as hosted storage or compute points for disaster recovery, so no need to create separate contract parts for them. Ticket time. Once you close a service desk ticket and approve spend time for billing, it will be automatically registered as a sale item for the respective quantity of support hours. Finally, manual sales items. You can register them any time to charge your clients for arbitrary products, services and amounts. Now, let's see how it works in advanced automation. Our first case is an accepted quote. Previously, I sent a quote to one of my prospect customers and he accepted it online with the built-in quote portal. Contract products from this quote, such as Ucron is or fixed price managed services are included into a new contract automatically, but products like perpetual licenses, hardware sales or security trainings billed one time, will be registered here as sales items automatically. The next example is a monthly usage for PEG services. On the first day of every month advanced automation checks each client for a monthly service usage and registers sales items for services like a hosted storage. Let's check this example. A sale item was generated on the 1st of August and contains the following products. Hosted storage for Ucron is Cyber Protect Cloud for per workload model. 1,301 gigabytes. And hosted storage for advanced disaster recovery. 851 gigabytes for July. Note that usages for such types of Acron as services calculated and registered as sales items automatically. You don't need to manually configure contract parts for them. The third case is a ticket time billing. As an example, I closed a support ticket from one of my clients. Advanced Automation suggested that according to my contract and SLA this ticket time should be billed with an hourly rate. Once approved this ticket time becomes a subject for billing and automatically registered as a sales item. You can always review and manually adjust your sales items before invoicing if needed. In my case it's 45 minutes of a ticket work charged with my default rate. Our last example is a manual one-time sale. Using advanced automation, you can register one-time sales for arbitrary products and amounts. Let's imagine we installed a new router for one of our clients. I'm registering a new sales item, selecting my client, add a product, check the quantity dash one, Check the price and save. I'll skip adding additional notes and just save. With this we registered all planned one-time sales items and now they can be included to the next invoice. Ticket time billing is a third one and the last one part of this video training. As an MSP you'll have to deal with billable and non-billable ticket time. We'll have a separate deep dive into the service desk module in the next videos, but for the overview it is enough to remember that an advanced automation ticket time billing rules can be defined on the SLA level. So, we can have a fixed price SLAs, in this case ticket time won't be charged on top of a contract, and we can have SLAs with a subsequent time calculation. In this case your client will be charged depending on time spent for the ticket work and applicable hourly rate. Ticket time approved for billing is registered as sales items in advanced automation. Let's see what billing options you can use. First, you can define a default hourly rate for a ticket work done while the SLA hours. It will be automatically applied, so your technicians do not need to remember all the billing rules and client agreements. Second, 
you can have a default hourly rate for a ticket work done outside of your SLA hours. It can be a special, for example, more expensive rate that will be automatically applied in this case. Third, you can always set up and use custom rates and apply them to specific clients or to activities when needed. Finally, you can use the block hours option in the client contract, when your clients pay for agreed quantity of support hours as a pack. In this case, advanced automation will track those hours and update you when it's time to renew the block. Now, let's see how you can use these options in advanced automation. To manually create a new ticket in advanced automation, proceed to task management greater than service desk and click new ticket. Imagine we've got a phone call from Mary Baker. She lost her password and now asks for help to restore it. Once you fill in the user's name, advanced automation will suggest you the details about this contact, client and his contract, so your technicians do not need to remember all your client agreements and their billing rules. Customer name, phone number, SLA and default ticket priority. Whether this should be non-billable or billable work and what billing rate should be applied in this case. According to the client's SLA this ticket work should be billed, this is indicated here with the billable checkbox. I'm setting the ticket status to in progress. System suggests time when the next ticket update should be provided according to the SLA, adding a ticket update. In the billing activity type advanced automation selects proper hourly rate according to the SLA. In my case it's a default rate. It can be also more expensive rate for the outside of SLA hours activity, or another custom rate I created in advance. Advanced automation helps you to track time spent on a ticket work even if you switch to another browser tab or app, and you can always adjust it if needed. As a next step we're going to close the ticket to see how you can bill your client for this ticket work. I'm opening the ticket, adding some comment, and logging extra time manually. We'll put the ticket status to closed and save. You can always review service desk activities using the time entries menu item. All the time registrations will be listed here, so you have a full overview of your service desk activities per client and per technician user. Once a ticket is closed it becomes a subject for billing. In the Approve Time tab you can see a list of closed ticket activities awaiting approval. Advanced Automation has already calculated time spent on those activities and now suggests whether those should be billable or not, what rate should be used, and what are the roundup rules. Let's check these four examples. The first case is a recently closed ticket. We spend 10 minutes to close and advanced automation suggests a default rate for that. However, we agreed with the client about 15 minutes roundup time, so our 10 minutes 22 seconds will be rounded to 15 minutes in the invoice. The second example is a ticket activity registered outside of the SLA hours. For this ticket advanced automation suggests billing for 30 minutes with more expensive rate. This can be manually adjusted if needed. The third case is a non-billable ticket work. According to the client contract we have the all in SLA, thus we don't charge on top of a contract. Our last example is a ticket activity registered in scope of block hours. For such types of time registrations, you'll have an overview of the block, it's available in remaining block hours. Now, let's select these tickets and click process. With this, we approved system suggestions and advanced automation created sales items for those that were marked as billable. In this video training we covered three types of billing available with advanced automation, recurring, one-time and ticket time billing. We registered a new contract, added sales items, and processed tickets. Now it's time to summarize that and issue client invoices. Invoice generation is available from sales and billing greater than invoices screen in advanced automation. We'll start a new billing run and select billable items from our previous examples. Invoice date is set as a current date, and I'll use my default legal entity to issue invoices. On the second step of the wizard, we'll select contract and sales items to bill. You can do this in bulk and simply select them all, but for our training purpose I'll select them one by one and comment. First tab, direct debit lists contract items with a direct debit payment type, ready for invoicing. But our example is a contract with the manual payment method for the client Sophia Business School. Sales items tab lists all the one-time sales ready for invoicing, those are Expert hours for Delta Insurance from the accepted quote. For our client Sophia Business School, we have monthly service usages automatically registered for Akron as services in the beginning of the month. Ticket work charged with a default rate. Manual one-time sale, router. And finally, we had a ticket work for Tom's Bakery charged with a default rate. Before invoices generation advanced automation asks to review the documents preview and confirm.
advanced automation generated three invoices for our three clients. The invoice layout is fully customizable. I uploaded a template example with some text and logo. So, our first invoice is for Tom's Bakery, Ticket Work. The second one is for Sophia Business School. It contains all the contract items, sales items for storage, billable ticket work and the manual sale. The third one comes from the accepted quote item. Our invoices are fully correct, and we confirm their generation. Now, they are created, can be synchronized with your accounting software, and sent to the clients. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video training. Thank you.